Hi, it's Nick O'Leary from the Node Red Project, here with an overview of what's new in the 0.18 release. Projects is the first major feature we're adding in our roadmap to version 1.0. Projects change how you manage your flow files. They give you a Git repository to bring version control into Node-RED. Have a look at the documentation and the other videos we've created that show everything you can do with projects. We've added some new nodes around message sequences. We had the split node already that could turn a single message into a sequence of messages. Well, to that we've now added a sort node for changing the order of messages within a sequence. We've added the batch node that can be used to take individual messages and turn them into valid sequences, either based on number of messages or time slicing. The join node has a new reduce mode added to it, where you can run a reduce function across all of the messages in a sequence to generate a single message output. The CSV and file nodes now also support message sequences which means you can efficiently stream, for example, a large CSV file from the file in node to the CSV node. You can now customize the icon for individual nodes in your workspace. Within the editor, if you go to the node settings panel, you can see the options there. Currently, you can only pick from the icons available within the runtime, and in the future we'll extend that to help you customize the icon even further. We've recently added support for scope modules in the flow library. Having done so, we've now flushed out the last remaining issues with handling scope modules within the palette manager in the editor. We've updated the version of JSON Arta we use in the expressions to version 1.5, which introduces some nice new functions to the language. Check out their release notes for more information. We've updated a number of the core nodes to not assume you want to use message.payload as the property to work on. For example, the JSON and the XML parser nodes can now operate on any message property. The JSON node can now be set to enforce a particular encoding. Rather than always toggling between JSON and JavaScript, you can set it to ensure the output is a JavaScript object, regardless of the input. We've added a passphrase option to the TLS config node. And we've added support for the TLS config node to the WebSocket node, so you can now do WebSockets over SSL. Speaking of WebSockets, we've added support for connecting the MQTT node to a broker over a WebSocket connection, simply by entering a suitable URL in the broker address. We've added a YAML parser node, and also updated the template node to omit parsed YAML if you wish. The delay node can now be reset by a message it receives, causing it to discard any messages it has delayed and starting afresh. The debug node has a new option to send any messages it receives to the status text in the editor. Whilst it only supports a few characters, that can be quite handy for sending simple uh, true, false or numeric values to the editor to help you monitor the state of your flow. The inject node already had the option to inject once on startup, and you can now set a delay before that inject occurs. And finally, the trigger node can now optionally treat messages with different topics as different streams to trigger. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in the 0.18 release. The project's feature is really exciting and we look forward to your feedback on it. We know it's not going to do everything everyone wants in this first version, but it's through your feedback we can help shape its direction moving forward. So get involved on the mailing list, on the Slack team, and subscribe below for future updates.